I'm going to make a short video on my kayak build. Um, I own a bona fide SS-127 and I have for a couple of years now. And I've done a lot of mods on it. I've uh, removed a lot of mods on it and I've done new mods on it. So it's a, uh, it's a work in progress. It's, it's always been really, really good fishing kayak for me. I just keep modifying it to keep improving it. Um, but I, I'd like to show you what I've done to it because I've been noticing a lot of uh, kayak builds on YouTube. And uh, I'd like to show you what I've done to mine so that maybe you can get some ideas to do it some of the same stuff for yours. Um, if you're handy with your hands and uh, you recognize a need that you have to modify your kayak, then this will be um, this will be a good one for you to watch. Maybe you can imply these on yours. So without further ado, I'm going to get into my um, explanation of my kayak and what I've done to it to make it mine. Okay, as I said, this is a bona fide kayak and it is model number SS-127. And what you see interfering with the uh, insignia is uh, one of my two anchor trolleys. I have one on either side. And to start with, this kayak is on an all aluminum trailer. Um, it's got galvanized wheels on it, but all the hardware is stainless. I paid extra to have that. The tail lights are submersible, they're sealed, but they never get into water. I never bag it into the water um, up to the axles as deep as I go. I don't go past the axles. I also put guidons um, with lights on it for better visibility since it's pretty small package on the trailer. So they work out really well. If I could, I'd, I'd show you those. I may have a picture of those lit up for you. Okay, so let me see. Let's start in the front. As I said, I've got two anchor trolleys, one on either side, okay? And I've got one GoPro mount mounted on my front um, hatch cover, which works out very well. Let me show you inside my hatch here. And inside the hatch, I have a dry box for my wallet and car keys. I have my launch rope. And the launch rope is a bag with tools in it if I need them. I also have a sombrella, which to tell you the great truth, I've never used it because I generally go out fishing in the morning and by the time it starts to get hot, I'm ready to come back in anyway. So I really haven't had any need for this umbrella, but I've got it if I do need it. Okay, so that's one GoPro. I've got another GoPro mounted right over my left shoulder. That's that one there. And uh, that gives me really good shots. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll see that um, I've mounted the camera on my head, on my chest, and various places. But this seems to give me the best shots. Uh, I'm out of the out of the picture, as so I have noticed that uh, when I had it further back, part of my head was in the picture, and the camera was focusing on that, and all the rest of the the uh, picture was kind of blurry. So. I remounted it so that I'm not in the, in the field of view, and uh, I think that's going to give me a clearer picture of my surroundings. So that's my second GoPro, and you'll notice they've got cables collect, connected to them. I've got battery eliminators um, 
for these and they plug into USB ports. I have one in the front and one in the back. Okay. And uh, that works out really well. I don't have to worry about cameras, I mean batteries wearing down and losing shots. So I can leave these cameras run for six solid hours because that's what the, uh, the cards hold in data. So that works out really well. And I raised this one up so that when I wash down, I don't have to worry about water getting in that USB port. Now next to it, you're gonna see, let me go around the other side and show you. Next to that, you're gonna see, this is the power for my depth finder. And because my depth finder is in my removable, my removable box, let me, let me latch that. Since that's in my removable box, and it's got my my uh, transducer mounted to the bottom. That goes in there. And this plugs in there. And once that's plugged in, I now have power to this box so that I've got power to my depth finder. And I also have power to my deck lights. Which I don't use them too often. But I do have them. Okay. So, let's see, what else? Let me go back around the other side. I also fabricated this rod holder, which comes in handy when I'm moving. I can slip it in there. But I also have, I also have clip to my seat, this and this, this from the pliers. And this I use for my lift grip when I'm traveling, but when I'm fishing, I hook it up to there. And that way, if I, when I catch a fish, when I'm ready to land it, I slip my rod in here and it allows me to have both hands free to land the fish. And I also, you'll see I've got a cleat on either side. And that's to tie off my anchor line, which is my anchor. And I really don't have a lot of line on it because I gotta tell you the truth. I don't anchor much. I don't anchor much. I'm, I pretty much keep moving because I'm fishing the backwater, so I'm constantly, I'm constantly hunting out the fish. So I'm pretty much on the move all the time. Let me turn these off. Oh, and by the way, that's that's my depth finder, my fish finder. Okay, that's a Raymarine. I'm, yeah, it's a Raymarine Dragonfly 4 Pro. And it's really, really a nice, nice fish finder. I'm pretty happy with it. I've only had Lorance up to this, but I gotta tell you, this is pretty user friendly. And like I said, I, I'm fishing backwater, so let me turn this off. Okay, I'm fishing backwater, so I'm generally in pretty shallow water. So, uh, let's see, what was I saying? I don't use my anchor much. Um, this is my power panel. And you're gonna see that I've got, I've got a amp meter. I've got a voltmeter, which 
I turn off because it consumes power, consumes electric. This is the switch for my USB. That's the switch for my lights. And I do go out before dawn sometimes, so lights come in handy because I've had a I've got a situation where I got almost got run over when I didn't have lights. So I have lights now. So that's the lights. Now this listen quite quietly here. That's my bait well pump. I have a live well that I put on this really early because I really thought I was going to use it. I don't use live bait very much, so that's the pickup. The motor is mounted deep in this keel so that it's below the water line and it draws water and it pumps up through here into this bucket. And I've got it set to overflow when it's about half full because a full five gallons is pretty heavy. Okay, so here's the overflow. And uh, it really works, really works well. I just don't use blind bait that much. So I may have used this in the last few years, three times, if that many. So that's what that's all about. And I've got a I've got a rheostat, rheostat on that, I'm not a rheostat, a potentiometer on that bait well motor. So once the bait well is full, I can turn down the consumption, the motor consumption electric, and uh, save battery power. So that's that. The amp meter works constantly when the motor's running. And that tells me, that pretty much tells me how, how much I'm consuming in power. Um, I've got a 100 amp lithium battery in here. So I'm still testing the, the capacity, the capabilities of the battery. But so far I've been um, I guess the maximum I've been is five miles round trip. And when I left the launch, I had 13.2 volts in it. When I returned to the launch five miles later, I still had 13.2 volts in there. So that battery is, is really turning out to be nice. And uh, I'm anxious to keep pushing the limits to see how far I can go. But based on what I've seen so far, it looks like I can probably go 15 miles round trip without really much, much problem at all. But as you can see, I do have my paddles handy. I don't particularly cherish the idea of having to paddle very far back, but I've got them handy if something does happen. And it has happened before. My, uh, my motor controller potentiometer got wet and it quit working about two miles from launch. So that wasn't fun, especially since I was paddling against the current and against the wind. So I was pretty wore out when I got done with that. My motor is, okay, that's, that's the plug for the motor. This is the motor controller which I made out of PVC and starboard. I use a lot of starboard on this. I'll show you how I mounted my battery too, so. And what I like about this is it's got forward and reverse, okay? Steering is by foot and I made these I made these foot pedals because I tried three different pedal assemblies, one which came with the kayak, and uh, 
they just bind. They just, because of the, I'm, this, my, I'm so far back, I had to offset the pedals. And because of that, it was binding. I tried grease, I tried graphite, I tried silicone, I tried everything. And uh, they just bound up. So I found this assembly. Works, works really, really well. These have been on here now for you know, two years. And I have to clean them occasionally. They do get dirty, but they work really well. So I'm really happy with them. Really happy with them. They worked out really, really well. I'm happy. What else? I told you I got my pliers there. Um, I have a knife under there. But I haven't had much need to pull that knife out. I don't keep my fish, so... Um, if I don't want to handle the fish, I use my lip grip. Um, yeah, that works out. That works out. Whenever I have to, I will, I will grab them. Um, snook, not so bad. You can grab them by the lip. Redfish, not so much. So the, rip, the lip grip comes in handy. Um, trout, because of their teeth, um, the lip grip comes in handy. Unless they're small, then you can handle them. Get your hand wet so you don't, you don't take the bacteria off them. Now this, this is my outriggers, which I made. And these are laminated three quarter inch layer foam, um, contact cemented together. This is PVC. And when I'm traveling and I don't want the drag, I lift them when I'm fishing and I want the stability, I lower them. Let me show you that again, because I don't think I, I don't think I photographed that very well. Okay. When I'm traveling, they're up. fishing they're down and they do believe me add a lot of stability for an old fart like me I have been known to fall out of this thing it's uh, not fun ruined the camera <laughs> which I had mounted to my hat <laughs> almost almost ruined my phone but I don't do that anymore my phone now mounts here now mounts here so if I'm, uh, if I'm using my phone for anything which sometimes I use my phone to monitor my GoPros so I'll mount it in here because they are Wi-Fi connected my battery let me show you what I use my battery my battery box function okay so the battery box is up out of the out of the uh, any water that's in there and I never get any water in there I used to get water in there when the battery used to be mounted up front it was front heavy and the water was always splashing over the bow but I don't have that problem anymore plus it came when I had the first had the battery first had the uh, I could add a uh, 54 amp um, optimum battery which is twice as heavy as this 100 amp lithium battery. And also, if you'll look in here, when I'm ready to drain this, I just pull this plug, it drains into the bottom of the kayak and out through the scupper. That keeps me from having to remove the 
bucket every time I want to empty it. Okay. So that worked out really well. Something small, something small was, something small was, you'll see these, these thumb nuts. This cover came with six millimeter Phillips screws. And every time I come in, I open this up, and I mount a fan over my front hatch, and I ventilate the whole kayak. Because the salt air gets in there and it plays hell. It's corrosive, it plays hell with the electric connections and all that other stuff. Let me put this down here. So, what I was saying, what I'm saying is, I did away with those Phillips screws, and I screwed studs in, six millimeter studs, and then I put these thread, threaded cap nuts on. through the entire length of the kayak and I never have a problem in there but I'm religious about ventilating after every use I'm also religious about washing it down after every use because I only fish in salt water so it's just a good habit to get into washing the salt off of it every time you use it one other thing now let me talk about my motor a little bit this is a uh, Hasswing Procure 1.0. It's a 55 pound thrust, 12 volt, brushless trolling motor. And I love it because it's a alternating current motor and it doesn't have any brushes. So it produces no heat and it's much more efficient on your batteries. So, I built another kayak and I put, put it on there, on that one also, because I'm sold on this. I don't know why more people aren't using these. It's a little inconvenient um, because I did make my own motor controller. That is a little inconvenient. If you don't have the ability to do that, that would be inconvenient. But you could always side mount it where you could operate it by hand and steer it by hand. I just choose to have my, my hands free to fish and uh, I steer with my feet. Okay? And that's a, uh, it's a slipstream mount, which I don't think you can get anymore. Um, the person that built this kayak originally put the motor and the mount on there. And, uh, and the one that I just, the one that I just built and sold, I made the mount for. And it worked out right. This is on here so that if I need to, if I need to drag the car, or the kayak off of the trailer, I can pull this, I can pull this pin and raise the motor and tie it off so that it doesn't hang up. And by the way, this pin is so the motor doesn't buck when you put it in reverse. Without that pin, the motor bucks, bucks up out of the water. Um, which is not a really big deal. Um, it just, it's, it's just a pain. Okay, so by having the pin in there and locking that in place, it doesn't buck. Okay, got a milk crate for my bait well and my 
tackle boxes. And I've got a three rod mount mounted to the back of it. And I've got two rod mounts mounted to the front of it that I made. So, what else can I tell you? Oh, I want to show you this. Oh, this I also made. I take with me generally five rods. And once I start fishing, the rod that I'm using, I mount in there. And the one that I want to use or have in, in backup, I mount in here. And I, I made this rod holder. That holds the butt of the rod and holds the tip of the rod. Now that's handy. That's right at my right hand. It's, uh, I mean, I would love to see rod holders built into this kayak, but that's a small price to pay, and I'm not willing to sacrifice anything about this kayak to, to gain rod holders when you can make them yourself. Okay? So, what else did I show you? I think that's, I think that's just about it. This has been going on for quite a while. So, I don't know what else I can tell you. I love the seat. I love how high you sit, you know. Being a senior, sitting too low in a kayak is just not a good thing. And when, a couple years ago, when I first started modifying this thing, I did put a, uh, I put a uh, stand assist, and actually I can show it to you. I had this mounted. And it was great, it was great. It was great hand assist. I had, uh, I had a, um, tape measure on it so I could lay the fish down in that tray and measure them. I had it carved out here so that I could see through it. The problem was it really was interfering with everything. And I really don't need it to stand up. It was really before I before I mastered my my outriggers. So uh, yeah, it's nice. It really does add a nice touch of stability. You can lean against it and, and stand in sight cast, and it's really great, but the negatives outweigh the positives, so I did, with it, did away with it. But you'll see that. You'll see that as one of my videos of one of my first videos of this kayak, and I had the uh, bimini top on it, and I had the stand assist and uh, the whole works. But uh, the bimini in that photograph was just for photograph purposes. Like I said, I, I've never really used it. Um, I love how high you sit here. I love that seat. You can sit in that seat for hour after hour after hour, and it's comfortable. I wouldn't trade that for the world. If it ever tears or breaks down, I, I wouldn't hesitate to get another one just like it from, from Bonafide. I had considered selling this one and buying a new SP-127, which is the pedal version of the 127. And the only reason I was considering it, not so much for the pedal assembly, because I do not want to pedal it, but that SP model you sit a little further forward, which changes the center of balance. And I think that really, I'm still attracted to that. I'm just not ready to give up on this because I love this kayak. I love fishing out of this kayak. So I'd show you the battery, but it's not necessary. You saw my power panel. You've seen my motor work. I don't know what else I can show you. You've seen my GoPros. 
seen my homemade motor controller. You've seen my my foot steering and my I didn't tell you but that uh, that shade that hood that the sunshade is is just uh, it's just what do you call that for sale sign board whatever that board is it's plastic corrugated plastic board and that really, really works well because when you're out there and the sun's up it's really hard to see what's on that but that sunshade works very very well okay i'll unplug my fish slider and this cap keep the water out when I wash down. Oh. Uh, I think that's it. I showed you the anchor trolley on this side. And there's the anchor trolley on this side. And I find, found having one on either side really gives you a lot more flexibility in hanging how you anchor off. Because I have been out fishing in the bay where I did need to anchor off and the current and the wind. Um, you really, you don't want to be casting into the wind or into the current. So, you, you know, you can, you can anchor off and pull the anchor to where your it's stern, it's hooked up to the stern. And depending on which side will dictate how your nose goes. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. All right, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I guess I can let you go. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. I don't generally talk on these, but today I am because I'm using my phone to uh, make this video. Well, normally I make my videos with my GoPro. And uh, since I use two and I edit back and forth, I haven't really found a great way to edit the audio on it. So I generally just, I turn off the audio on my, my GoPro videos and I add dialogue, text dialogue. Okay. All right. I will let you go and thank you for being with me and I will see you on the next one.